Hey, we are live. Hello, friends. How are you guys doing? Welcome to the show. My name is Fanny Renders, and today we are going, going to be doing some live coding. More specifically, maybe you've catch it from the title. We are going to investigate Conway. Now that's a kind of a light or lightweight. It's not a silver bullet, they say, but it's a, it's kind of a helper modular framework for .NET Core to help us create uh, uh, more modern applications like uh, microservices. Uh, it should be quite interesting. Um, if you just joined us, hi, welcome. Um, if you if you do drop by, say hello in the chat here, and then I'll gladly pause and say hello back um yes and if you want to actually follow my next streams by all means you can do that by clicking on oh, this that side clicking on this little uh, follow button and uh, you'll get a notification when i'm live again because my schedule is a bit wonky at this stage it's not a fixed period so i try to stream whenever i can um so without any further ado, uh, I, it looks like it's kind of uh, very quiet in a chat room now because we haven't started really. We're getting to the motion. Uh, just want to say uh, thank you so much to Veronica Geek for following me the other day. Um, I don't believe that was on the stream. But in any case, let's, uh, let's quickly hear a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Yes, I don't know if you caught the joke, I mean sponsor, meaning uh, it's actually part of the team. I, I'm part of SDN Cast. It's a team we do like weekly webcasts or podcast, webcast, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we do that every Thursday and that's uh, around eight o'clock, uh, half past eight Dutch time, CET, or, yeah, CET. It is in Dutch, but sometimes we do it in English if we have some English friends. So what we do is we try to cover the weekly um, news events and we do some demos sometimes. Uh, so do pop by. You know, go to twitch.tv slash sdncast for that. Join our team and uh, check what's happening in a world of development. How about that? Before we move on to the actual star of the show for tonight, Conway, I just want to quickly give a shout out to uh, some of my friends, Martin van Stam. He does, uh, he does office development. You know, you would have thought that Office is just a uh, productivity suite. Well, guess what? It's uh, it's 2019. Actually, folks, you know, it's there are two months left of the decade. Think about that. Think about that. It's amazing. But in any case, Martin is doing uh, awesome work coding. Uh, actually, he's been coding like a lot these days. He's, he's like doing almost every day you see he's like uh, live coding in the mornings dutch time cet yet again i think it's around seven or something and uh, he's doing office development so if you ever thought about um, creating an office app or office extension for office 2016 and up um, do follow his channel and see how he does it and hear it from a from a from a pro you know twitch.tv slash martin Fun stump. Check out his channel. Uh, then we move on to Jan de Vries, Jan Dev, twitch.tv slash Jan Dev. He does Azure um, and uh, he goes around talk about serverless. Hey, look, uh, it's, uh, I'm giving a caption. Thank you for the host, Jan. Um, streamception. Will this work? Yeah, there we go. Streamception done. Uh, yeah, so he does. He does mainly Office Developer, not Office, uh, Azure Development. He's a solutions architect for 4.NET. Uh, so do check out his channel. Whenever he's um, he's streaming, he will be chatting about, uh, you know, .NET and Azure, etc. Uh, moving on to our friend, uh, Gerald Fershleis, also hosting me. Gerald, thank you for the host. I'm giving you a capogen right there. Streamception. There we go. Um, yeah, so Gerald is... Uh, 
He's uh, currently working for Microsoft on the Xamarin team. So anything Xamarin, anything Xamarin isms, go check out his uh, his stream at twitch.tv slash JF Verschleiss. Um, and uh, you won't miss a thing on Xamarin. Last but not least, Eric Lehmann. He is um, he's actually hosting the SDN cast uh, show now that's just finished. Um, yeah, so Eric, I've never, I don't know exactly when he streams, but he, he, he streams, trust me on this. Um, and then, hey, SDN cast, thank you so much actually for, for, for hosting. I just ran across the Studio One into Studio Two, which is this one. To uh, host your guys, my friends out there. So yeah, so uh, so anyway, uh, Eric Lieben is doing uh, also Azure related things, um, and he's uh, a member of Aurela. Now that's a that is a front end framework. So do check out his his channel, that's Eric Lieben, on Twitch. All right, so let me see. Do we have anyone in the chat that we need to address? No one yet. Okay, so we'll we'll wait for the folks to come in. In that case, is the music okay? I hope I hope so because um, it's uh, not too intrusive. So Conway, what is Conway? Now Conway, if we go back to um, the homepage, Conway-stack.github.io. They say Conway is an helper library, is a set of helper libraries that can be used independently of each other to help you to build your web applications and microservices. So it's not a framework or a server bullet, which I mentioned, and it doesn't provide or it does provide utility to tackle challenges such as messaging, service discovery, load balancing, secure configuration, monitoring etc 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 so all basically all the plumbing that we normally use to implement on distributed applications conway is your guy to uh, apparently to to help you with that lightweight modular and simple so let's uh, let's maybe kick the tires of conway today i was thinking and uh, to see if we can um, use it in our in our uh, projects going forward and uh, these guys from 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 Conway I just want to actually give them a shout out uh, where is this um, do they have a team here somewhere I've seen it somewhere dev mentors it's actually part of dev mentors I think uh, oh, these guys uh, I hope I say this correctly Piotr Genkiewicz um, and Darius uh, Olekwicz. Sorry, guys, if I mispronounce your names. A huge shout out to these guys uh, because uh, they are partly responsible for Conway. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it's an open source project, so do follow along on that, uh, on that things. So let's click and get started to see what's. Uh, how we can get started so we say uh, so let's let's do this um, I'm gonna start a new terminal I'm not even gonna open Visual Studio today I'm not even gonna open Visual Studio at all I'm gonna open Visual Studio code same thing but different right so what are we doing let me see if I can find this one um, I try the new cross power PowerShell. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's make a sandbox. Who doesn't have a sandbox? Let's make a sandbox um, directory. And we cd into that. Oh, darn. Oh, this is not command line. Does that work? No. Or wrong. How do I pipe something in PowerShell? That? Comma? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a PowerShell expert. So, okay. Um, so let's do this. Let's say .NET new. .NET. 
dotnet new console. Let's call this uh, Convey app. Okay, so that's done. That's that's been created. And if we uh, literally go into code, what has been created here? So we have a Conway app here. I need to see into that Conway app. All right, let's see what's happening here. Da -da -da -dum. Okay, so close that. Uh, so basically, this is the console application. This is not a Conway specific ism right now. Okay, so this is still .NET Core um, out of the box. Um, and I think to prove it, why can't I just run it? Oh, it's still installing. Um, you, you can't see this, but look here. Behind me, can I move this around? I can't move this. Um, hold on, I'm going to see if I can. So behind me, there's a there's a little uh, notification saying that uh, you need to install C Sharp extension. So that's to light up the, the C Sharp stuff in VS Code. So you have to go and install that. Just remember that. So meanwhile, it's now downloading um, support for .NET Core the language features from the OmniSharp uh, package. That, that shouldn't take too long. I think there's also Razor support, debugger. Okay, that's that looks like it's done. What's it doing here? Server is running. So if I hit the 5 now, I have .NET Core. I can click there. Will it now change anything? So it has added C Sharp now as the extension. So if I hit F5, Hello World is now displayed in my in my console there. Cool. Cool. So that's uh how do I stop it? That's probably it's already stopped, isn't it? You see? Okay, it runs and it just stops because there's no thingy. Okay, so the first thing they say is to uh, add the Conway package. So let's do that. Let's go uh, .NET package add Conway. Am I doing it wrong? .NET add package. Ah, grammar. You have to think like a South African, yeah. You know, um, .NET add package. I think .NET package add. Okay, so now that's adding Conway to our project. Cool. Just want to clear that. And it basically, what that did was uh, it added a uh, package reference to the latest version of Conway. Just want to quickly check um, if I had any... I <laughs> uh, just had a comment now uh, on, on one of our uh, HDN casts. Uh, we had a comment of a guy says, Are you guys from TV? <laughs> no, just like normal guys coding, doing things. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's Conway that's been added. And then let's see. And then what we need to do is. Uh, I am actually going to be, I'm going to cheat a bit, because will this work if I go async, task, um, and then if we say uh, await web host, That's using web post there. Dot uh, create default builder, is it? And then we pass the args in there. 
I'm actually going to cheat a bit because I'm, I'm flipping around and I'm not supposed to. Uh, Alright, so that's that. And then we say dot um, configure services. Now that's normally what we would expect. Our um, services. That's like, uh, this is the same as the startup class. I would say. We've got that going. Okay. And then we have uh, configure, app, 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 configure app configuration. Now this is the pipeline. So the first one is the dependency injection. Uh, but this is not new. This is .NET Core 3. Um, and then what we have in here is the app. Yeah, so we have the app in here that we can pass along. Right, and then we go build. And then we go run async. What? Really? I do have version 3 installed. Run async. Should be there. Maybe it's a thing. looks the same. Oh, uh, this thing needs to... Yeah, this thing needs to return a... Um, build or something, isn't it? Yes. Why don't I have a run async? What's happening here? Delegate doesn't take one argument, context and configuration. Okay, that's a bit weird. Because if you take a look at a normal .NET Core app, am I just missing something? Yeah, because this build and no accessible extension method build. The first argument services collection. Ooh, configure services. I see. There's maybe the problem. Uh, two things here. You can have 12 there. You can have the context of the service collection or you can have the action of the service collection. So you give the context as a parameter in. Oh, maybe I'm missing that. That's much better, right? That one comment or one bracket can be such a thing. Create a default. What? No, it can't be. Return. If I don't return anything, then just add it like that then. If I'm not mistaken. 
Okay, let's just stay and then technically you have that. I need to return something now. So if I have 12 here, yet again we've got the context and the configuration. And that's it. So here I think we can say dot what? Hmm. Is it like that? What is C? I see C is the host and app is the configuration builder. Can you believe it? Okay. Go like app. Go like app here. Yeah. Hosting environment configuration. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> oh, it's configure. So I'm misreading it. So the one is the DI. This one is for the configuration. So this is for configure. Configure. And I need to be adding the hosting model there. And here is the middleware. So this is for DI. And this is for the pipeline. And if we had configuration, we would do the configuration here, which is the configuration builder. Or the builder. Let's uh, let's do it like. Ooh, what's happening there? Excuse me. We were ha we would have that. So this is for the config, config stuff. Okay, so this is what we have. Control this because I need tasks. Um, so if I go and say uh, app dot use, then I can say a request that comes in request dot or well, the one is the context, the one is request. Oh, this thing is not working properly. So what is A? A is noth nothing. Okay, so we can say context. Am I missing something here? Yeah, let me see. So the request delegate. Okay, so it gets a request delegate in. which is pretty much context and I think response or something, isn't it? Or I'm confused. I'm just going to cheat. Did we do it some way? Let's quickly create a new application in Visual Studio. You know what? Actually, we're going to go to the docs. Let's go there. ASP.NET Core Docs. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go to the API apps. Overview. Um, or oh, actually hosting. So we want to go down to the host. You start up. Come on. I'm confusing myself here, I think. Start up. The startup class. That's it. that's what I'm looking for. So app builder. So if we go into Visual Studio and we create a new um, new project, 
a web application project call that web app 3 and we say we want an empty web application project I'm gonna shoot myself in the foot here because it's so easy aha uh -huh. use endpoints that's what we want so app dot use oops use endpoints okay so that's the endpoints builder and then for that we pass in the endpoints that we want and then we can say endpoints dot map get if we go to the main route then I can have a uh, async context return oops await context dot response dot write async Hello, streamers. Context response dot right right async. I need ASP dot core. Let's just get rid of this guy there. Okay, so I think we can do that, and it should disappear. Yes. So this is the new way of uh, doing it in .NET Core 3, I, I suppose. So if I hit F5, um, so the browser is running and it's giving me an error. An exception of type invalid operation exception has incurred. Please add in input routing middleware by calling use routing. Okay. So you probably need this uh, user routing before we do anything else. I would imagine that use endpoints uses routing, but that's just me. Okay. So um, I'm gonna make a new file. Um, tests.htp so I'm using te uh, an HTTP file extension um, which means I has I have this um, HTTP client is this one no it's not this one rest client it's called rest client go check out this extension it's pretty cool for VS code um, you want to be installing that because if you create HTTP um, files, you can check it into source control. You can do a bunch of things like variables and that kind of things. It's quite cool. Um, I'll show you. It's amazing. So what we'll do is we'll we'll use this, um, and it uses the kind of hash mechanism to separate all the requests. Uh, what do we have? We have a uh, host. So the host will be uh, HTTPS. I think it's localhost. Host 5001 or something. And then we can actually go host slash. Oh, it's actually that. A double. It's a double. It's Um, for instance, that so my application needs to be running. Okay, it runs. Okay, so it's, it's running on 5001. And here in my uh, HTTP file, it's going to execute the host slash. So if I say send request, I'll get back hello streamers. 
Can't make this bigger. Sorry, guys. Don't know how. How can I make this bigger? Hmm. Any case, so it's it's actually sending requests, bringing it on that way. So that's cool. So we're going to be doing this way for today. So anyway, let's let's add Conway to the to the mix. So that's the that's the way we're doing things at the moment. Nothing wrong with that. So let's see what does Conway bring us. So if we say if we add Conway to our services, so let's do that. So we say um, services add Conway. Okay. And we build it. Okay, great. So now we have Conway added. Now what does that bring to us? Let's go on. Let's let's read. Blah blah blah. Without having, so whenever you're using a program CS, you can build your web application and microservices without having to specify a startup class and add MVC with use MVC, etc. Or doing startup CS, included just invoke add Conway and start using the Conway packages. Okay, so some of the things that we need to remember is to add the section. So uh, let's let's add that section. I think it's on the pre-create app settings. That's by convention um, a JSON file app called app settings.json. But you can change it by uh, going to your uh, configuration section and going. I believe it's builder dot uh, add file. Add JSON file or something. Yeah, add JSON file and you specify the file name, etc. So you can you can do stuff like that, and you can have your own little file. But by by convention, it's called uh, app settings. It just makes everything better. So let's make uh, let's uh, call this application the main awesome main app okay so what's this display banner what does that do well i'm just gonna hit hit okay oh did you see that did you see what's happening here maybe we shouldn't run it here maybe it's better for me to run it in the console so if i go dotnet run let's go dotnet watch run Boom. That's quite cool, I must say. It gives in a nice uh, CLI look to it. So that means like this is the awesome app that runs. Cool. Fancy. Okay, but what does it bring us? What does it bring us? Let's go back to the docs and find out. That's it. So now let's go. Okay, so that's that. That was easy enough. CQRS. Have you guys heard about CQRS before? Now CQRS stands for Command Query Res <laughs> Command Query Segregation or something. Command Query Responsibility Segregation. I meant that. I meant that. So um, go check out Martin Fowler's. Uh, I should go read, go back to 2011 and read that. But that's the gist of CQR is it, it splits up your commands, your mutations, and your reads. So your reports or your queries as different processes. Because if it's one, you have that one bottleneck. And you have to, if you have two places, one goes in, the other one goes out, it's completely separated for performance reasons. Um, so we, we can add 
Can we create a new? Cool. Um, should I change the music a bit? I think I should change the music a bit. This might be a bit better. I think a bit more, more hip, I think. Uh, no, sandbox. Um, Conway. Okay. Right, so we use this as the running application and this we'll use as the... Oops, not that. The copy in. .NET add package Conway CQRS commands. So this adds the command section. Specifically commands. So now let's, uh, let's attend to commands. So like I said, mutations is commands. If we add that to our package, Okay, and we go back to uh, here. Close this guy. Um, what does it bring us? So let's let's see. So now, okay, so we need to create a new i command class. So let's follow along. Let's create a class called create account with id, email, and password. that work? Yes, that works. Um, I'm going to save this as a, uh, what, is it? what is this? This is a great account. Great account command. Let's save this in commands. And it's a CS file. Can that uh, work if I go CS? CS shop there we go I want to put it in there and do I have a come on I don't have that oh I do I have the snippets that works so let's create a public class called create account command okay um, and I, it had ID, email, and password. So string. Was, oh, is it good? Okay, fine. We'll we'll do a good ID. The reason why I'm typing this kind of things is to learn. I can might as well copy and paste and get it over with. But it also gives me my ASMR. It gives me my typing as uh, typing skills. So we have ID. I lost my train of thought. Email and password. Prop. Oopsie. String. Email. I do it all the time. Just go back there. String. And password. This is for that counts. And they say this is a command, I command. So that should control dot in, not the Windows input, but the CQRS command stuff. So if I, if 12 in there, it looks like it's a marker, marker interface. Doesn't have anything in there. Uh, so that's fine. And then we have a, um, a constructor. In here, so there's a const. I would have expected a constructor to be great. Let's copy and paste. That's that's valid. Um, hmm. So we can say I a uh, good. ID, string, um, email, um, string password, string password, there we go, and then we can say this dot ID is, yeah, okay, this dot email, is email and this dot password is password 
All right, nothing too fancy there. I can actually omit this here. So let's let's try this out. Alt highlight. Oh, this doesn't work. Alt control highlight maybe. Oh, that does not work at all. Um, that works. So shift Alt. I can uh, multi-edit things. It's quite cool. That's awesome. Going back to the docs. So for each command that we do, because a command on its own is like a message. We need some kind of handler that handles that message. And in this case, it's called an I command handler. So what we'll do is we'll create a, uh, let's create a new folder, handlers. And we'll, we'll create a new file um what do we call this create account handler of course create create account handler dot cs comma cs dot cs and we'll do a quick uh, ctor there uh, and we call this create account handler does this use like C sharp? What's it now? Eight syntax or something? Oh, that's class. And this is an I command handler. And then we need to specify the type of command. In this case, it's a create account command in there. So a control dot, I need to pull in this, the, the Conway CQRS uh, commands uh, namespace. And also I need to implement this interface. That will give us this handle async function. Now what this does, it, uh, it's a function, whatever happens in this class, this handle async will be called by Conway to handle the message given a certain command coming in. So you could for instance do your validation here you could call your database table to insert the stuff in here you can fire off an event you can basically do anything um yeah so put the code handling here right so we have that so how do we wire this up now into the rest of our pipeline because we need to kind of tell it to use um, to use Conway. Oh, that's interesting. It's using a Conway builder on configure services. Okay, so let's uh, get rid of this. So let's go builder is a new Conway Builder. Okay, that's a static class. So let's go that dot. We say create and we pass the services in there. And we say add, add command handlers. Okay, so add command handlers okay that's obviously this convey securities commands part okay that adds that and what is this add in memory command dispatcher that's probably a a uh, handler what is that uh, so what is that dispatcher what does the dispatcher do Dispatching a particular command object can be also done using the Conway package dispatcher by calling add a memory dispatcher. I have no idea what a dispatcher is, so let's quickly let's leave it out. We can say uh, return builder.bolt. Or we can just maybe I, I 
uh, kind of like this way build. Okay. Do I need to now call use something in here? No. So how would it know that command is there? Okay. So that's the security part of things. So it's there, but it's not, it's not linked. So maybe, maybe I, I'm reading this wrong. Uh, I, I see. Okay. So the dispatcher. Okay, so we need to create an account service. That's like an endpoint. Interesting. Because this is an application service. Oops, let's uh, let's go services. Oops, that's a file, eh? And then uh, account service was called right. <coughs> account service. Let's just call it account service for now. Uh, class, we'll call this account service. Note I'm doing it singular and they're doing it plural. 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 Um, I'll just do public in there. Account service. And parameters, uh, all right, so I need a command dispatcher. So it's I command dispatcher. Because that's using commands. Command dispatcher. And uh, when I create a field for that. The, the way I've done that is control dot, and that will give me my helpers in a VS, VS code. Same as uh, in Visual Studio. Okay, so now I have my function. Could imagine this is a kind of a, you could extract this also as interface, I suppose. I'm gonna copy this for now, just to save some time. So we have that. Um, that's basically a one liner, right? Create account command. Oh yeah, I got a command written out. Oops. And the the dispatcher is not with underscore. And I need to include system tasks in here. Oh, not like that, but in the namespace. Maybe we should call this dispatcher. There we go, and that should go away. And then we should be async, right? Or not? Dispatcher dot dispatch async. Okay. Send async. So the docs are not hundred percent correct here. We'll do pull request. 
because this should be send async. Okay. That's fine. But it doesn't change anything on my uh, on my application because it's still running. And um, I think when I execute it, it still says hello streamers. It's fine. Um, okay, so let's leave that there. And quickly, let's look at queries. So queries, like I said, it's on the other side of the fence. It's it's queries or reports or whatever you want to call them. And um, we add it as this package. I like the way it's kind of being added modularly. Where's my uh, shell? So we'll add the queries functionality in there. That's the NuGet package. Okay, now we need to create a uh, account query, get account with an ID, and that will spit out a account DTO. Might as well copy this. Same goes for this. So we, we would say, we'll create a, a folder for queries. Can't type tonight. And in here, we'll create, uh, what's it called? A uh, get account query. I like to suffix my things. Get account query. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, now we need a, a account DTO. Control dot, can we generate that? Let's generate that in there. And this good is system. Okay, so that is fine. Okay, so I can imagine then when this query goes, it will then create, it will then output this DTO. So should we move this to a new file? We can move that to a new file there. Let's just call that account DTO. So that's the output. Control that. Account DTO. That should be fine. Account.dto. Yeah, there we go, it should resolve it. So this is the query and that's the output. This is how I understand it, so. Okay, it again, same thing. Then we have handler, so let's keep to the, to, to the kind of a, let's keep to this um, way of working. We go handlers and we say, um, account query handler get account handler get account handler maybe this should be plural accounts service service like that okay we paste that in there we need to control dot a few things in here get the convey uh, stuff um dto's handle async task yes i need that and that should go away all that kind of things not old call not all code paths return a value. Okay, so this this needs to return a uh, account DTO. Nimbot TV, thank you so much for that emote. Welcome, thank you very much for uh, stopping by. That's an awesome uh, multi emote you have there. 
Welcome to the stream. Um, so this is where you're going to be going query dot ID and you're going to be using this uh, query parameters and then outputting a um, a new DTO. So await await uh, or return await, sorry. Or like a new DTO or something, blah, blah, blah. Account DTO that you're going to be doing like that if you're doing async. But you can't do await new. So let's do that. Oh, I'm confused. I'm very well. Thank you very much for asking, Nimbot TV. How are you doing tonight or tomorrow? or this evening or this afternoon that's great thank you for stopping by uh, I am investigating Conway now Conway is a modular framework for .NET it's been in the news on the Twitterverse and I thought well I'm gonna be getting my hands dirty a bit with it um, yeah so Await, yeah, you, you, you can say await and task dot from result. Right, you can you can do that. That's valid, right? If you say async here. Okay, so all those things will go away. That's my query. Everything is fine. Well, something is happening. Accounts service. Great stuff. So what did I say further on the documentation? Okay, so now we need to say add query handlers. Interesting. Uh, of course, because I have commands and queries. So add. Okay, it's probably not there yet. So add query handlers. Control dots. Uh, will that work? Contrary. Blah, blah. Add query handlers. There we go. CQRS query handlers. Okay, brilliant. So I'm still in memory query dispatcher. And that will basically pass this dispatcher in there. I see. Okay, so if we say add in memory the command dispatcher that's the guy dispatching these commands to the handler and if i say add in memory query dispatcher that will be dispatching it from from whatever service i think so so that's cqrs i think in a nutshell and now what is cqrs without events right so uh, we need to have events going back and forth um, to notify certain parts of application or sections of our solution about business processes or something that happens during a business process. So order captured or new account created, all those kind of things. So that's that we'll be using by emitting events. And then normally you would have a pub sub mechanism by publishing events and then have subscribers subscribing to those events. So in this case, let's let's investigate that. Uh, invent and we add it uh, not here. This is CLS and then Conway CQRS events. That will add the events um, to our lovely CS proj. Okay, so implement I event or I reject event. Since the event represents something that already happened, you should follow the convention. Keep all events immutable, with other words, not changing them. Name your events should be kept past tense. Because why? Events should be facts that occurred. It's history. You cannot change history, folks. 
order captured, account created, drank beer. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it there. <laughs> uh, so in this case, we'll, we'll, we'll try this out, getting lazy tonight. So let's copy and paste this event. I think it's just small enough to, to do. So we have, let's make a new folder for it. And that's a file funny events and then uh, what was this called account created event account created event we'll stick that in there account created event event there we go but do i have the same now for query handler Account handler, we have that account DTO. Okay, so we do have the query that needs to be query. And the service, account service. I'm just doing a, a bit of refactoring here because just uh, missing a few things. And I believe the commands were the same thing. So I created a command handler and a command. But that's fine. Brilliant. With this event, um, let's add the system uh, in here. But there's also another one. Uh, it's a string missing. We can um, we can help them do with the uh, documentation on this. Great. Let's uh, add a convey. Create a dedicated event handler. Yet again, we need for in something we need to handle something. Um, in this case, we'll create a account created event handler. So here, handlers. Account created. Should I call it event hunter? No, because it's inferred, right? Wrong. <laughs> uh, this should be count created event. All right, so, okay. Now you would notice this at thingy. Um, no, it's, it's, it's kind of weird. Why have it at event? It's not a Twitter handle. The thing is, if we do that, that's a, uh, a keyword in C-sharp. And uh, that's not possible to do that because it won't compile for sure. So to get around keywords, you can use at in C-sharp to uh, omit things. So it will ignore. Um, so it's a kind of a way of um, describing your code by still using the keywords. But it's not really the keyword. And a dot system in here or tasks in here and this is not okay not old code or not all code returns a value so handle async so that I can probably do async or something okay So let's see what they say. Um, oh, I need convey events here. There we go. Not all, not all, old, not all code returns a value. That's true. Uh, because it's returning a tasks. Await, let's just do that. That's await task dot complete.
Okay, I hope that's that's correct. Because that's the way I'm building it. No two ways about it. No two ways about it, sir. It's awfully quiet tonight. Is everyone sleeping or is they just like... This is boring. If you just joined us, welcome, 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 welcome to the show. We are experimenting with Convey, which is a modular framework. Well, not really a framework. It's like a... Um, it's like a uh, opinionated stack to help you with microservices uh, or distributed applications. That's the new word. 4.NET Core. Yeah. Uh, all right, so now we need to add event handlers to our little program. So we have add, add event handlers. I think this is so far. Come on. Chain call, what's that mean? Add event handler. There we go. Um, th this way, it's so far my, my, my favorite. And it's inherently, it's a feature of .NET Core by having the builder pattern. It's quite cool. So dispatching a particular event can be also be done using the Conway package. Start with originating in-memory dispatcher. I Conway Builder calling it add dispatcher. Let's do that. Okay, so we have that. And we can uh, say dot, I hope. Yeah, there we go. So we have a dispatcher for handler for commands. We have a dispatcher for queries. We have a dispatcher for events. And I can imagine that this is dispatcher. Um, do something. I think publishing it to some kind of bus or something. But for now, it's all in memory. I see. Okay, so post process account creation. That's the handler. No? I'm not sure what this means though. Because I'm a bit lost here. So you have event dispatches. So why would you have that? Um, event handlers handles the message coming in. Right? And dispatches. I see, so dispatches, dispatches a specific event. Okay, let's, um, let's not focus too much about it. Let's just uh, hop on like that. I think it's fair to say um, that we could just, you can see that's, that's a problem now. I've got so many dispatches. Let's call this uh, command dispatcher. And um, I think the other one was query dispatcher. It kind of feels a bit too abstract in a way, um, but fine. That's just me. Control dot this uh, system in here. Um, gotta I 
query dispatcher. But this is not going to dox. It's just me learning. Um, query dispatcher. I will actually split this up kind of in, in a separate classes, I would say. Uh, control dots. Let's add... Let's add a new field and we have a uh, I event dispatcher. Let's uh, chuck these guys in here like it's uh, you can see them dispatcher. And let's create a uh, field for them. And this should be the command dispatcher. And this should be the query dispatcher. And this should be the event dispatcher. You ain't say. But I think dispatch is called query, I think. Okay. And this is a query object. And this is publish. Yeah, so this publishes to 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 something. Um, so the in memory, okay, so that's how it probably works. So the dispatcher for this case is in memory, but it could be a service bus or RabbitMQ or something. Right, so that's the one-liners. You can see this as post and get and then whenever something has happened I can publish this event okay cool I think okay so yes save it all Going back to the docs, what did I say? Account service, all that stuff. So that's fine. All right, so now we have CQRS in place, which means we have a, a subsystem running. Now we need to expose our application as an API. So it looks like they have a web API functionality here. So if we go and add .NET add package, Conway dot web API. It adds a bunch of things. So I'm gonna quickly change this music. It's a bit fast for me. I think maybe let's go for some ambient. And some uh, Joel maybe. If you just joined us, welcome. We are building, we are messing around with Conway, which is a modular stack for building distributed apps on .NET Core. Now, this is the sweet sounds of Sapphire. Cool. All right, so we have a oh, build failures. Oh, okay. That's old. All right, so what is this? With usage of Web API package, you can define endpoints more fluently without the need of a split core MVC package. So do mind, I do not have MVC running on my application at all. Um, deriving from controller. So it's more ex it's more a extension of built-in root builder abstraction, allowing to define routing and deal with HTTP requests. Okay, so basically they say you could just say add convey. So we can do that. Dot add web API. We add dot using uh, convey web API in there. To define custom endpoints, invoke use endpoints as you would normally do with application builder. Then you can make use of get, put, post, and delete methods. All right, so let's see what they have here. 
Okay, so that's interesting. So they had get, hello, get, 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 get. Okay. I see. How's this different from being a handler? Okay, I see that's the same. All right, so let's let's follow this. So we have our endpoints here. So we're gonna keep we're gonna keep hello, just to to show that you can use Conway with all the other things. So we say endpoints. That. Okay. Am I missing something here? A bunch of things. I'm going to remove this. Okay. We need a uh, parcel DTO, which I don't have here. Darn it. Can I create it? Cool. Uh, hmm. We'll refactor it in a sec. Does this not override? No, something else is wrong here. Okay, so maybe we should just do a based on a, an account. Because we have a DTO here. Um, okay, so reading further. What does I say? Secure is to seamlessly integrate with command and query that can be invoked by HTTP call. Just make sure you don't process queries asynchronously as it don't make much sense. Uh, Alright, do I do that? <laughs> yes, I do. It doesn't make more, more sense. Fine. I won't do that. Um, okay, so .NET... Let's add .NET cores in there. Just gonna quickly maybe not do this for now. I'm missing something now because endpoints map get. Does it kind of override it? What's this? Oh, so it overrides that. Interesting. Okay, so I can go get like that. Which is pretty much... I see, so what, you ha what we had here, this one. You can really pretty much put in here. Like so. Right? Or not? Takes two arguments. Really? What two arguments does it take? The string? And a context. That's the path and that's the context. What is the problem? Oh, 
Okay. Oops. Maybe if I just say app dot use invoice. I have it like that. I have it exactly like that. Okay, I have kind of have it in line. Which is fine. What am I missing? Let's undo everything. Oh, actually, yes. I was missing that, and I was missing that and that no that okay and that and that there we go For some reason i had my things mixed up curly brackets and brackets and stuff like that Okay, so now let's get rid of this noise. So we should have streamers here. In here. So now if we go back, it runs. If we then uh, go to do our test, I think we still get hello streamers, which is fine. That's what we want. That means it's using the Conway stuff. If we say that we want to query a certain account. We could make use of the service. The query service. Or this account service. To get a certain account given an ID. Okay, so we, we could say dot get, and I think they have it here. Yes. Partial and partial DTO. So that's a query and a DTO, isn't it? As you can see, generic methods can be used for defining endpoints, although it's not required. Whenever you define a generic endpoint of type T, it will bind your incoming request to your new instance of T. Okay. So it's kind of a request. To automatically handle incoming requests, you can implement iRequest marker and create a handled request. I see. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, then, ensure that, okay, secure is, that's what we want to do. Use endpoints, use dispatch endpoints. So ensure that web API extensions is already registered. That's which it is. Use endpoints to change, use endpoints to use dispatch in dispatcher endpoints. When defining your endpoints, you will notice that there are two additional optional parameters before dispatch and after dispatch. Okay. Interesting. They say we should use dispatcher endpoints. Use 
use the Spatcher endpoints. Do I have that installed? Oh, I don't have that installed. We need to add the package. This one, the CQRS for Web API package. Okay, so now that will give us hopefully the dispatcher stuff. Cool. Okay, so now we can do it, for instance, the same way in line. We have requests. To expose all of the commands and events as an auto, auto documentation, it might be helpful integration with other services on the custom endpoints. Okay, we'll we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so let's let's do this. We want to say um, get account query, and we want to say account DTO, right? Do mm, you see that? It's got a path. Let's call this uh, accounts. And then this will map now, I think, to the actual query, right? So the object, which is ID. So if we say ID in here, it should take ID, right? I would hope. think let's do it like that so id and then we have a function that's before dispatch so that's kind of before this happens and we have one for after so now let's keep it like that keep it simple all right, so let's have that. And this run, oh, this, okay, this runs. It's, it's red, but it, it compiled. See, it's running. Going back here, we still have hello streamers. So let's go and say, um, host slash accounts slash internal server error okay so okay converting that type to a good okay so it needs to be a good valid enough so does this thing have a good thingy let's google uh, rest client vs code vs code um, good oh true uh, nice we can just use good we're just passing a we're just passing like that that should be a good right so if i do that that's okay cool that's cool so it actually returns an object which is that that new object uh where, where am i now this one. So technically, if I say, I won't be able to say, okay, my DTO is, for instance, it just happens to have a, uh, let's, it's, let's say it's a string, it's an ID. Um, let's call this account ID to be verbose. And a string that we can say, name uh we could say that id is the query dot id and name is for instance some account it's a two string oh there we go two string that okay so now that's in place and this is this is running as I save as I go on. Um, test it again. 
send request look at that how seamless is that there must be a way that I can get this preview window to just to uh, light up how do I do this rest client rest client I saw it now rest client add indentation marks decode escape characters large response size limit font family there we go Um, okay. Consolas and this, uh, I don't know, 20. That looks better. Uh, that's fine, right? That is perfectly fine, I would say. Mm. Let's try it again. It looks almost the same as that. Font. What is the font here? Twenty. Let's do that. Um, what's it called? Rest client. Come on. Where's rest client? There. We're going to go down to that. Let's save that. Great stuff. Okay. So now we have that. That's that's awesome. That's actually pretty cool. And I haven't written anything that's uh, specific. So it immediately figures out that if I pass that query, it maps to that ID, even though it's initial case, and it expects it to give a DGO out. So technically, I don't need this service. That's just for show, right? Because why? That's a dispatcher in its own. Okay. Cool. To expose all of the commands and events as a sort of auto documentation it might be helpful uh, to integration with other services similarly to Swagger docs uh, under a custom endpoint Contracts, defining array of commands and events that are okay. How does that work? But I cannot still understand I request and I response. Okay. I see. Okay. 
So if I would have created a new folder called, uh, not there, but a new folder called requests, uh, get account request dot CS. I'm just now trying to wrap my head around how this can work because this is all as well for the query. Uh, class get account request public and we'll call this an I request. Okay, that looks like a marker. So they say, okay, that can be, do you have a handler? All right, so, okay. Same, same thing. So we go get account request. And we have a um, good ID. And we can say uh, it's that guy. But also we have a get account handler. We just public class everything. And this is a uh, requ I request handler, and it returns a account DTO. I see. So it will then. This is valid because this is a cool. This is just a different way of doing things. Um. So yeah, it will then um, get a account query, get account query and spit out a account DTO. Right, so get account Okay, and uh, why is this not? Is a... Okay, it's a request in. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. so it needs to be a request. So this is a get account request. Okay, valid. So now let's implement this interface get account handler. There's no namespacing here. <laughs> oh, my soul. Okay, so we don't have namespaces. Uh, queries, get account, query handler. Where? Oh, there. Get account, query handler. Query handler. Good spot about to say get account request handler right and we say move that to a different file but it needs to be the handlers I'll chuck that in there right um, okay so that's request coming as so a request it's, it's the same as I can imagine the query. Okay, cool. So then what's the difference then between I'm not a DDD expert, but it's kind of it goes all over. 
because it's kind of the same as as the query handler in a sense. But I want to I want to vet this because this, instead of having query, you have request. Public ID you get set. basically the same so some account from request I believe let's just do it like that and see what happens okay so what's the difference here so the difference is that instead of saying get this query I'll give you that must I say get request and a request turns it into a query, which turns it into the handler, most probably. So I could say get Let's go here and see what happens here. So this is a T query. So this needs to be a query. So basically, does that mean if I, no, it can't be. How can that happen? So to automatically handle the incoming request, you can implement I request marker, okay, and create a, it will be invoked automatically. How would it know? How would it know? To automatically handle the incoming request, you can implement the iRequest marker interface of type T. Okay, and type T is uh, what? T request. don't get it will it then just automatically work or how because I don't see it working how does it know what endpoint to use oh okay So it's instead of saying, this is my query and this is my response, you just say the type, aha, uh -huh. okay. You know that aha uh -huh moments? So instead of saying that, the query and the response, I'm just gonna do that. That kind of should disappear because, 
Do I need to add something special here? No. Delete, delete partial. Is that similar to a commanding? Second, so use dispatcher endpoints. And use endpoints. So I still have that. So what will happen? With that. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with use endpoints for now. Okay. Waiting for files to change. Build failed. And um, get account request. Something is wrong here. No, it's not. It's not saved. There we go. Now it will run. Cool. Testing it out. Okay, that's funny because now I get an OK. Accounts and good. Mm. Should give me this. So T is a class. I'm trying to figure out get accounts request so it should use this request which means it should use this handler or should it use this handler for this path that makes more sense hmm. does not work get account request handler I'm, I'm confused. So get partials. Is that a request or not? Do they have like a a repo or something here that we can maybe a sample? There we go. Let's go deliveries. Okay, so I'm D into stuff that's orders. There we go. We've got commands, controllers. Okay, they still got controllers. Get order. Got a DTO post. And 
what is okay so this is create order mm, where is the commands okay so that's a command okay there are no requests Get order pricing. So this is what I want to see. Okay, so this is now doing that in line. That's a query. So get order pricing. And this is a DTO for it. Totally sure what is the whole point of this request because it does not really ring a bell. Because if I say get account query, which makes more sense, I get wait, what? What? Um, I'm confused now, folks. Because... Oh, wait a minute. Use endpoints. I have used endpoints. Not specifying... then it's a query but where do you define its output blank now accounts dot debt I mean accounts query has an ID does it pick up this one then use dispatch endpoints was it called that and that is a query they say t is t is a class they don't have to do something with that class oh that's why You use it like that then I'm, s I'm still not sure how the okay so this is the inline implementation this one uses a bunch of things also dispatch endpoints okay that's a given okay it's a query and then the deliveries use nothing at all okay let's just keep it there for now 
Zorandas, I get this, which is which is cool. I don't know what that request thing is. I need to make a note of it and see how does this whole thing fit in because I have no idea. Okay, go back to the docks. It's probably this is overriding this. Most probably. Okay, so to, to expose all the commands and events in order to sort of automatic check generation um, article contract. So we could use it like that. I have a contract attribute. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, this is, this is where it gets interesting. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. So we need to have a class. Contract attribute. Dot, probably dot CS. And then they have a, uh, let's just decorate the requests with that. Okay. out still how do you how do you define okay, I'm just gonna kill these two files because it's kind of in the way okay I'm still gonna go dot get type of get request let's do both let's do both let's say the one is on the v1 other one is v2 just to uh, hmm See, this should be a uh, query, though. So maybe a request is the same as a command. I have no idea. Because what's the whole idea of this thing? To mark these things. Okay. So if we say what? Okay, so that's a contract. All right, so what what then? Okay. Uh, okay, let's see if that works. So, you see, I can then do that. That's what you're saying. Not found. Doesn't make sense though. 
To expose all the commands and events as a sort of auto documentation might be helpful, blah blah blah, similar to what Saka does under the custom endpoint by default contracts, returning an array of commands and events object using JSON format, use public contracts extension, okay, that's what we're missing. Alright, so we need to add public contracts extension, of course. To so app.use public contracts. Okay, so we have two here. We've got that one. And T. T is what? The attribute type. Okay. I'll just keep it as is. So now, is that what I get? Okay, so I get all my commands and all my events. I see. So a query is not a Okay. So if I ah I keep on doing it that side. I could say contract and uh, in my events I could say this is a contract and my event this I can take out so you're saying if I execute this now I will get like nothing what doesn't automatically work I did not wire up my command though. But does it does it matter? Because this kind of works neatly, but it does not it does not uh, bring back anything. How can I have it bring back something? Okay, so I'm not entirely sure how this can work. I contract. Does that mean I, that I need to, maybe, commands, where's that, create order command. So this is our request, 
cannot be, man. Still blank. I have no idea. Why would it? What is the difference between a handler or a request and a command here in this case? Because I can do that, right? If I say send, I don't have anything there. I was probably gonna do that because that. Hmm. Any case, I want gonna get these guys on the show to show us the ropes. But so far, I'm quite impressed. So we have Swagger. Let's quickly do Swagger while we add it. Let's add, oh, not that one, uh, this, um, it's, this is also something we can change in a doc, so it's .NET add, it was this one, adding some swagger documentation, and we can just add, I'm just going to skip this song because it's kind of crazy. Um, Oops, not that one. Add Swagger Docs. And then what will that give us? Does it mean we need to go to HTTP Hello Streamers? What is uh, app dot use redoc? What's that? Swagger is not found, so how on earth? Uh, okay, use Swagger Docs. App dot use Swagger. Okay. Right. Uh, that will give us a swagger UI. Or not. Is this thing broken? Method not found. Static middleware. Okay, so let's not use Swagger UI for now.
Okay, so this is not the one we want to use then. Use... According to the docs, let's maybe read the docs. So if they say use Swagger docs. We use Swagger docs. Okay. And that's... Object reference not set to instance of an object. Line 46. Okay, there's a bunch of things here that we need to kind of optimize. Can we move it up the stack? No reference exception. Probably because I need to add swagger. No idea why it is not swagger doesn't working. So that's another another thing we can maybe ask them. Because the documentation is a bit wonky here. So let's go see what it, what else is there. HTTP. So request service discovery and load balancing. Wow, that's interesting. Um Okay, so add HTTP client. You have some servers that uses that client okay and then you just say services that web service okay so this is now going to more advanced stuff so we have got message brokers uh, like RabbitMQ it's going through that docs oh this is the one of docs Conway Docs Swagger. Maybe that's the reason why it's blank, Fani. Because we have So what's the difference between Conway Docs Swagger and Web API Swagger? So let's see. Let's add that package. And then um, in our config, we'll just stick this in. says object reference add swagger docs use swagger docs Don't need to say it. I'm feeling, I'm 
Yep. Okay. If you just joined us, welcome. We are busy investigating why this is failing. <laughs> um, method not found. Static file middleware. Hopefully they will say something about that here. Create at Swagger Docs. Use Swagger Docs. This is complaining. On uh, use static files though. Use static files. I think that's a thing. It's not working. It's not working, man. So if I kill that, what will happen? Kill that, what will happen? Then it works though. Public contracts is a bit of a hmm. cool. The moment I put Swagger Dogs back, it breaks. doesn't work with API Swagger Docs, I don't know. Method not found. Logger factory. Swashbuckle. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so logging. Um, let's quickly investigate this further. I'm not going to go into detail here. Maybe we should uh, do this in another time. But then it's got some logging stuff, um, which is quite similar with its in configuration. This um, not be not inside your app. That's also no. No, I don't know. of things it looks like this is this is supposed to be outside but in any case let's maybe not break it let's not use swagger docs because I broke it um okay so that's logging metrics uh, it's also quite interesting how would you do that app settings 
I like the, the way that it's with the builder pattern, distributed tracing. Oh, that's that's logging. Okay, what's this using Jagger? Okay. To trace end to end things. Configuration. Okay, okay, that's with the vault persistence. MongoDB. Or Cosmos, if you really want to do that. And security. JWT, cool. Validate credentials, create token. Okay, cool. It's uh, it's quite cool though. But like I said, I'm going to be trying to get these folks on um, on stream so that we can speak to them and and uh, you guys out there can ask questions to the creators of Convey. So far, I've been judging it um, with my limited knowledge. It looks quite cool. Um, it's a little thin wrapper around ASP.NET Core. It makes your life just a bit, a bit better. And um, a bit better always means improvements, right? So that's a, that's a good thing. Folks, it's another half an hour over my bedtime. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining tonight. It was awesome, like always, having you, you guys um, pay program with me. And um, so I will see you guys most probably next week or something. Before we go, we are going to... Let's, let's raid someone with the limited viewers I have. Let's see who is on here. Lana looks. Thank you. I think let's raid her with the two viewers. That's an ad. I'm going to stop my music for now. Lana looks. <laughs> okay, let's say hello. To her. Start raid. Hang around. We've got like two two people. <laughs> I think that's cool. So let's raid now two people. Hello. <laughs> so guys, if you're going to be uploaded. AI, which like I like this. Okay. <laughs> hey, Fanny. Yeah. It was, it's a lot easier to read it. Fanny Reinders. What's up? Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, guys. Always get, I get my, um, my name incorrect. Um, yeah, so you guys check out I would want to be written in uh, Lana um, and uh, I'm going to bed. And uh, with that said, cheers folks.